All right, so here we are in the vellum brush section. This is my favorite part. I find this stuff to be super fun. Um, so what I'm gonna do is uh, let's just, uh, we're gonna keep this um, couch set up right here. I'm just gonna kind of come down here and just create a grid. And we're gonna eventually make a blanket that we're gonna drape over this couch. But for right now, all we need to do is just kind of focus on the vellum brush by itself. So just throw it on a grid like so. And then I'm gonna set the size of the grid to a 1.5 by two, which is a size that I found felt good for a blanket uh, for this couch. So let's highlight that grid. And then I'm gonna remesh it. So I'm gonna throw it on a remesh node, hit the tab key type of remesh and put that in here. And when we wire them together and we look at the geometry of our uh, grid, you can see that it kind of turns everything into a bunch of triangles. And uh, vellum looks a lot better when we're working with these kind of regularly spaced um, triangles, but they're all kind of oriented in different directions. It just helps the folds feel a little bit more natural. So instead of this like kind of grid shape that we have here, we're gonna go for this sort of triangulated shape, but it's a little bit low res at this point. So uh, we can actually increase the number of triangles by just um, adjusting this target size. And right now the target size is set to 0 0.2. I'm just going to set it to 0 0.02. You can see those triangles get a lot smaller. So we can get a lot more detail in our cloth. All right, so the next thing we need is to configure our cloth constraints. And that's really easy. We just throw it on a vellum configure cloth node. So I'm going to hit the tab key, type vellum cloth, and hit enter. And you see we get these uh, this new vellum cloth node with these three inputs. I'm just gonna wire our remesh into the left input of the vellum cloth. And you can see that it's given us a bunch of extra geometry here. Um, don't really need to worry about that, but you know, all these parameters right here, you can see these are all the parameters where we can kind of control how stretchy our cloth is, how bend resistant it is. The stiffness of the bend constraints are controlled here. We can control the mass of the cloth. We don't really need to worry about this too much at the moment, but this is just sort of where the base physical properties of the cloth are set on this vellum cloth node. And then the next node that we need is a vellum brush node. So I'm gonna hit the uh, tab key and type uh, vellum brush. And hit enter and here you can see we get another uh, node that has three inputs and we're just going to match these up with the cloth ones. So we're going to put the left one in the left one, middle one in the middle one and the right one in the right one and set our display flag to the vellum brush. Now, in my case, I just got that little pop up that said compiling OpenCL kernels that went really fast on my computer, probably because I've already compiled them uh, because I've been using the brush on this computer before. So it's likely that you may have a little waiting period here where you're waiting for your OpenCL kernels to compile. And if that's happening, um, you can go into your task manager, or in my case, since I'm on a Mac, I could go to the activity monitor and you would see some process here. If you sort by CPU usage, you would see some process towards the top here that is called like MCL compile something or other, and it'll be taking a lot of your resources. Just keep an eye on that. It might seem like your Houdini is completely locked up, but after about a minute or two, it should come back and uh, you'll be good. You should see this interface in the upper left-hand corner. If not, you just want to make sure you've got this manipulator selected like so. And you can see that this, uh, my mouse now has this little red circle on it. And if I drag that over this piece of cloth, you can see that it's actually simulating the cloth. It's kind of behaving like cloth. So that's very cool. What I find uh, is one of the most handy things to uh, know about is this reset all changes button. If you just click that, it resets you back to zero. And um, I find that when I'm playing around with cloth a lot, I'm constantly like experimenting and resetting my uh, changes uh, doing this. So you can find you get you get to a state that you don't really like, you can reset it. Um, another thing that is uh, kind of nice is that if we kind of look over here at this uh, heads up display, it kind of gives us a hint as to how things work. So if we wanted to increase the radius of our brush, we just middle mouse scroll uh, up and down to change the size of that brush. And then here we can kind of, you can see that we're, we can drag it around. There's a much more dramatic effect because we're grabbing a larger screen space area of our brush. And so this circle is a circle that is kind of a 2D circle in the, um, in the screen plane, we can actually change what um, shape of brush we have by going up here. And so right now we're using a screen, but we could uh, use a surface brush. And this is actually going to orient the brush to the surface of the uh, geometry. We could choose a volume brush. And this is sort of a brush that's grabbing everything in this circle. Um, we can also do nearest point. So this is just grabbing, I think, yeah, it's just affecting a single point on the cloth. 
And uh, this is just connected geometry. So it's grabbing all connected geometry uh, to that uh, point. So it's honestly, it's just kind of like translating it at this point. Um, I just like mostly using the uh, screen space brush and just kind of moving around and, you know, shaping my cloth in screen space. I find that to be the most intuitive way for me to work like so. Just going to hit the reset all changes uh, button again. And let's look at some of these other functions. I'm just going to bring my brush size down a little bit. I can also adjust that over here on the vellum brush parameters. You can see we've got our screen radius and stuff. So a lot of a lot of the uh, on screen uh, stuff that you see over here correlates to what's going on in the parameter view over here. So let's just bring this down to a size of maybe 100, something like that. Just kind of uh, move that around. Looks looking cool. I'm just going to say reset all changes again. And let's look at these different brush modes. So the mode we've been using is called brush. But from this drop down, we can choose uh, something like drag. So let's see what that does. We can kind of grab a corner. And now it's a little bit different than brush. Brush was kind of just like influencing the cloth uh, to maybe move in the direction that we're doing it. But here, this is more like we're actually grabbing the cloth and uh, moving it around in uh, space kind of like that, which is kind of cool. Um, another mode that we've got is contract and expand. I'm just going to reset all changes and let's go to contract and expand. And uh, I'm just maybe bring my mouse brush up a little bit. You can see that as I brush this, it's causing it to kind of contract, um, near where, uh, it's getting bunched up sort of near where I'm clicking, which is kind of interesting. Um, likewise, we can um, also expand. So if you look down here at the bottom of the screen, you can see we've got this little tool tip here. It says left mouse button is to, con is to contract and control left mouse button is to expand. So if I control left mouse button, you can see that it's starting to spread that cloth out. So you can kind of get the ability to kind of work back and forth with some of these functions like so. Another mode that is kind of cool is uh, rotate. Let's take that. Let's take a look at that. I'm just going to reset all changes again. Rotate. If I click on it, you can see that it's actually rotating and spinning our cloth. And similarly to the uh, the last option, if we hold down Control and click, we can rotate it in the other direction, which is kind of neat. You can create some really cool shapes, and you know um, this almost just looks like. I mean, it looks beautiful. It's got these amazing folds in it and this nice curled shape like that. It's just so much fun. Let's look at another mode here. We got crease and ruffle. I'm going to just reset all changes here. Crease. Let's uh, maybe bring the brush size down a little bit. I'm just going to kind of draw a line through this. You can see what it's doing is it's kind of shrinking the overall size of these uh, polygons here. And so if I increase the crease scale or decrease the crease scale to something really tiny, like let's say point, uh, point two, and we draw through here, you can see that those triangles get really tiny um, in the middle there because we're basically just saying, um, take the effective area of each triangle and shrink it down. Just pretend that we're just making it smaller like so. So you can see we're actually really kind of shrinking that geometry down quite dramatically. Um, I'm going to hit reset all changes again and we can try the ruffle. So similar to before, we can also hit the control button and ruffle. And that causes the actual triangles to get a little bit bigger. So we can get a little crazy with it. Let's make the ruffle scale something like three. These triangles are going to get like three times the size. Uh, oops, I got to hold down control. They're going to get three times the size when I hit control and click. You can see that the triangles get very big and this might be too big, but you can kind of see that you can use these uh, different values to kind of modify in that way. Let's bring this back to the default value. I'm just going to I'm going to, uh, let's say control middle click on the ruffle scale, the crease scale. And I think I adjusted the soft. I just going to put that back to one and let's say reset all changes. So, so yeah, you can do fun things like ruffling the edge of this. Like say if you wanted to make like kind of a, um, a ruffled edge of a curtain or something, you can just hold down uh, control and draw along this edge. You can see that that gets nice and uh, ruffled out and, uh, yeah, maybe we can just shrink uh, this edge and you can see that you're almost making like a pleated, uh, not really pleated, but this is starting to maybe look like something like a dress or something like that. So if we actually had a tube instead of a plane here, maybe you could turn this into a, like a dress and you can use this to art direct clothing very easily. So that is uh, the crease and the uh, ruffle. I'm just going to hit uh, reset all changes. And let's go over here and look at some of the forces in the forces section. So the simulation mode right now is damped. So if I grab this, let's actually, um, I'm going to 
hit control Z and I'm going to choose the drag brush because that's what we're mainly going to be using for this lesson. So I'm going to grab the drag brush and kind of drag this around in air. You can kind of just see that it's it's just sort of it's just sort of following us, but um, it's not. And then it kind of freezes uh, where we leave it. Now, if I switch this over to settle, you can see that what that's actually doing is uh, causing the cloth to kind of like react to gravity. And if I grab it, I'm sort of lifting it up but it's no longer in this sort of like drag state where it like freezes in air. And you can see it's reacting to gravity. If I didn't want it to react to gravity, I could untick this and that would reduce the gravity to nothing. And I can now kind of just kind of toss this cloth around and it'll just sort of react to uh, those forces like so. If I untick live simulation, you can see it all stops. And if I grab it again, it's pretty similar to the damped motion but um, it kind of, it, it just sort of like freezes where it is. Now, if I switch back to damped, this is a little bit more intuitive uh, because I it feels a little bit more um, wieldy. I feel like kind of uh, working with the settle mode sometimes can be a little unwieldy, but this feels a little bit more like it's, it's in my control, if that makes any sense. Um, if I switch back to live simulation while it's damped, you can see that the, the cloth is slowly trying to you know, uh, operate through its bend constraints to like get back to its initial state. Um, so that's sort of where the bend comes in. You can see that it's actually still continuing to simulate after I let go. You can see it's those stretch constraints are trying to pull the cloth back into its original shape and stuff like that. And uh, in the damped situation, if I turn on gravity, it has no real effect on the uh, simulation, it appears. So that's just sort of uh, something to note about the uh, this gravity situation. So let's take what we have experimented with so far right here and try to drape this cloth over the arm of our couch.